Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We're in Luke chapter 7, and it looks like we're starting in, um, in verse 11. So let's get started today. It's Friday. Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. <clears throat> um, This is very interesting. I'll tell you why. It's uh, I remember a few years ago, well, it's been quite a few years ago, um, there was a large number of people who would pray for you, and if they pray for you and you weren't healed, the first thing they'd say is, well, you don't have any faith. I prayed for you. I mean, I know I prayed, but you didn't get healed, so you just don't have any faith. And it, it appeared, and it wasn't... Uh, at least it was common with some of the people that I uh, knew, was acquainted with. So it became such a uh, negative thing to even want to be prayed for for healing. Because if you weren't healed for some reason, automatically it's your fault. And people started pointing fingers at you. You weren't spiritual. You didn't know how to trust the Lord. And wow, it just turned into some big blame game. I love this verse, though. Dead guys don't have faith. Jesus had faith. You know, when I read in the Bible, in James, when the elders come and pray for someone, they're supposed to pray the prayer of faith. They're not hopefully trying to work off the faith of someone else. They're supposed to be people of faith. Jesus walked as a man of faith. Dead people don't have faith. I have learned since that season when I heard so many in this blame game of why a person wasn't healed to look at it this way. It is my responsibility and privilege to pray for people in their healing. And when I look at them and don't see them healed, I don't think, oh, wow, wow. Must not have, have any faith there. Must not be any faith. They must have done something really wrong. Must be a lot of sin in their life. I, I don't even go there. I turn to me because I, I say, Lord, I want to be like you. I want to be a man of such great faith that when I pray for people, they're healed, even if they're dead. I encourage you to not be a person who blames everyone else for your spiritual deficiencies. I'm just not getting fed there. Uh, you know what? I don't, I don't ever receive anything from the Lord from that person or blah, 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 blah. Listen, we need to start taking responsibility for our own spiritual well-being and health. If we've always got to be babied or coddled or things have to be said just perfect or we get offended and if we get offended, it's their fault. My friend, hear me. Be a person who takes responsibility for their life. Seek the Lord. Read His Word. Hear from Him. And if you're in a place where maybe you don't see the, uh, or, or you don't hear faith messages, listen, that doesn't mean, I mean, try and learn something from everyone rather than just say, I can't learn anything from that person. Let's take the responsibility upon ourselves to do what's right, to learn what we can learn, to seek the Lord on our own without someone coddling us, pressuring us, or propping us up. Verse 16 said, And then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. So, because of this, they immediately thought, this must be God. Uh, I know that 
the signs and wonders, Jesus, uh, when, when John asked, who are you? Uh, Jesus said, hey, you know, the lame people walk, blind see, deaf people hear. And I know that miracles have something to do with, uh, or had something to do with qualifying Jesus. But I want to guard us about seeing someone move in a gift or, or, or used, used in the gifts of the Spirit and immediately thinking, wow, they must be a prophet. Uh, because they did that then and were correct, doesn't mean that they did that they did it other times and were correct also. God always qualifies us by His Spirit and our character. Um, it's not because we have a title or a place or a position or some great miracle takes place. Don't simply believe someone because you see a miracle or two. Look at their character. Make sure there's someone that you can trust who's abiding by the, by the Word, loves the Lord, and not simply say, wow, he did a miracle. This person must be of God. Hope I'm helping you today. I'm, I'm trying to. Hope you have a great weekend. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your goodness, your, mer your mercy, your word to us, because, Father, it is rich and filled with instruction. Help us, Lord, to receive from you and to grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.